Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quick and easy differential equation. Now, this might look like a very simple problem to you. And we probably did this before or something similar to this problem. I can't remember. If I did this video before, please let me know. But my goal is to present multiple solutions. So, looks like I'm going to be presenting at least two solutions. I'm also thinking about the third one at this point. Let's see if that goes well. But let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to use a pretty standard approach because this is a separable differential equation. So we need to take advantage of that. Y prime is the derivative of Y with respect to X. So we can write it as dy over dx equals y over x, which is nice. So let's go ahead and separate the variables. Put the y on the left, divide by that, and put the dx on the right, multiply by that, and you'll get this. Now this is really cool because the variables are separated so I can integrate. When you integrate each side, you're going to get something with the natural log function. Now let's avoid some of these issues because at the end, they're going to simplify anyways. So I just want to assume for simplicity's sake that y and x are positive. But even if they're not, this is still going to work. Why? Because of constants. Okay. So whenever I have something like y equals x, if x is positive, y is positive, and vice versa. But if I have y equals a constant times x, then you can kind of manipulate the constant to get what you want. Okay. I hope this didn't give away too much. Uh, let's get, let's continue. <laughs> we already started. So what is the integral of one over y dy? It is just ln y. Like I said earlier, I'm not going to use the absolute value. Just simplify it, oversimplify it, whatever you call it, and assume that all the variables are positive. And the right-hand side, the integral of one over x is ln x, and then I'm just going to add a constant c. Okay, usually it's, uh, C is very common. Now, what would you like to do at this point? How could you solve for Y? You could do E to the power both sides. So E to the power ln Y equals E to the power ln X plus C. And E to the power ln Y is Y. And then this can be separated into E to the ln X times E to the C. But E to the C is also constant, right? Why? because c is constant, uh, a constant to the power constant is also constant, let's call this k. And e to the power ln x is the same as x, so we get the following, y equals kx. Wow, it's that simple? <laughs> yes, and you can definitely check this out, like differentiate y, you get k, and then divide, divide y by x, y by x, y is kx, so you get k, and that is equal to y prime. So the inequality, I mean the equality is satisfied. Nice. Okay. Let's see if we can get the same result with another solution. Second method. This problem is fairly simple. You probably see it on the first day of a differential equ equations class like introductory, but I think it's good for demonstrating different methods. Okay. So I have y prime equals y over x and here I want to cross multiply so go ahead, go ahead and write it as y prime x equals y let me copy that here so I want to do the following notice that uh, the first derivative of y is multiplied by the first power of x and on the left hand on the right hand side y itself is multiplied by x to the power 0 which is 1 so the powers kind of agree with the order of the derivatives. By order, I mean like first derivative, second derivative, and third derivative. Make sense? So here's what this tells us. You can basically set y equal to x to the power r, where r is the root of the characteristic equation. We're going to come up with what r is, and we're going to substitute it. So y prime from here becomes r, x, r times x to the power r minus 1. Using the power rule, we can easily differentiate this as a polynomial or just some power function. Okay? Now we're going to go ahead and sub these into our equation. Let's go ahead and substitute. What is my equation? This one. 
Okay. I have y prime x equals y, and what is y prime? r times x to the power r minus 1. What is x? x is x. And on the right-hand side, I have y, which is x to the power r. This might look like uh, trivial to you or kind of obvious, but it's not obvious because this is a specific type of equation. It's not always true. Only for certain uh, y values or functions, this is true. Make sense? Now, notice that when I multiply these two things, it gives me, this is x to the first power, it gives me x to the power r. So I get something like this, r x to the power r equals x to the power r. I mean, you can cancel both sides, but don't do it. It's safer just to put everything on the same side and then subtract and solve. So let's go ahead and do this. Subtract x to the r, factor out x to the r, and you'll be much better off. Now notice that I don't really care about x to the power r because x is a variable, but I care about the other factor, which is r minus 1. So if r minus 1 is 0, then this means r is equal to 1. But wait a minute, where does r come from? Can I back substitute? Of course, r appears first time here. So y equals x to the power r. What is that supposed to mean? That means y equals x is a solution. But guess what? This is up to a constant since y equals x is one of the solutions and you are thinking about uh, the characteristic root being 1 and that's the only one. You can basically write this as y equals k times x. Now let me tell you wh what the general form looks like. Suppose we had two roots. If we had two roots like r1 and r2 to the characteristic equation, okay? And how would you write our solution, right? Because there could be more than one solution. Sometimes you're going to get like r squared minus 1 equals 0. It's going to give you two solutions, two distinct solutions, I should say, right? So in this case, we write the solution as follows. y equals c sub 1, which is a constant, times x to the power r1 plus c2 times x to the power r sub 2. Notice that we use those r1 and r2 in the exponent, and we also use arbitrary constants to be able to write the general solution. In our case, there's only one root, so you can safely say that r sub 2 is 0, so, or c2 is 0, you could probably say that, c2 is 0, and then from here, uh, you're going to get just one solution, and that can be written as a constant times x to the power r, or y equals k times x. Does, does that make sense? And let me tell you something, if x is equal to 0 or k is equal to 0, I should rather say, sorry about that, if k is equal to 0, the constant, then obviously y equals 0 is going to be a specific uh, or particular solution to this equation. Why? Because if you think about it, y prime is 0 if y is 0, and that's definitely equal to y over x because y is 0. Obviously, in this case, you don't want x to be 0, and x doesn't have to be 0. Let me just remind you that y equals kx was used here. Let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative method. Maybe I'll just outline it real quick, and then you guys can work on it. So the third method I was thinking about was replacing y over x with another variable like u. So then from here, you're going to get something like y equals ux. And then differentiate both sides. That's going to give you y prime equals u prime x plus x prime, which is 1 times u. And then what you can do, do with u is replace y prime with that. And that's going to give you u prime x plus u. And that is equal to u. And then u cancels out. You end up with 0. From here, u prime is 0. Then u is a constant. And then you get the same idea y equals kx. And this brings us, looks like I did the entire solution. Anyways, this was, this was short. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.